Hey champions, this is Lesson here, and I've been requested by a lot of people to put together a video of a game going on and then put a commentary track over it, uh, kind of describing how the game went and some of my thoughts around some of the moves that were done. So this is the first one I'm doing, it's between me and Lionel. So in this game, I'm playing with Kendra, and Lionel for this match is going to be playing with Fong. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a pretty classic matchup for us, so let's just jump into it. So we've already drawn our opening hands, and I know straight off the bat that I have a pretty solid control. So I need to know what he's going to be playing, and I have a gut feeling that he's going to be going on the offense here. I see that with his first move, by moving forward twice, you know that he is coming in for the kill. So to counter it, I'm going to move forward once, and I'm going to drop a Death's Companion between us. This is great because this card occupies the spot that we're be and that's between us, meaning that he can't just charge up against me. And with the cognitive restrictions that's in my hand, I know that I'll be able to keep it alive for the next few turns. Next round? Does this deck even have any really good players? <laughs> That'd be highly unfortunate. We're already into the second round, and Lionel's getting a little bit desperate. That death's companion staring him down, and there's not a whole lot he can do against it. Now, here's my recommendation. Always have something in your deck that can deal with Death's Companions and Angels of Retributions. For Bellum and Thymos here, there are so many good answers. And I'm surprised that he's struggling with this. But he has one move that hits the table and it's really painful. The Giant Scorpion. Always a powerhouse in every game it's played. But there's always one thing you can do against a Giant Scorpion. And that's Cognitive Restrictions. Cognitive Restrictions is a powerhouse for every single axe on deck. No matter who you're playing with, you should always consider putting this into your deck. Now, I know it can't counter the abilities done by summons or by alterations or anything else, but here in this particular case, it's able to counter the beckon ability from Giant Scorpion. This is a little note about the way summons work. The beckon ability is being played by the champion, not by the summon. So being able to use Cognitive Restrictions to negate it is totally possible. But you wouldn't be able to use Cognitive Restrictions to negate the Giant Scorpion's range attack because that's being done by the summon. And Cognitive Restrictions itself says it does not, it only negates champion abilities. This last move here, he put a Fire Shield on himself knowing that he's going to be taking in a lot of damage. So I move my desk Companion to the side. The goal here is one, to block him in between his Hound and the desk Companion he's blocked in. The other is to get myself closer so I can activate Neurum. Really, really powerful ability, especially if you're playing Kendra Control like I am. So forcing him to discard two cards at random and lose two life. It's just a pain that most champions are not ready for. So we're starting the third round here, and there's an answer Lionel has, and it's a desperation move, but it is so powerful and so good to have at this very moment, but it's going to cost him a lot. So Lionel needs a way out of this, and there's one move that he sees, and it's so powerful right now. So he takes one step back and drops the Ajna Echi Purifying Wave, killing all the summons and destroying any alterations if there were any. Now the reason he takes a step back is actually kind of smart, because if he stayed exactly where he was, then in response to Purifying Wave, I could have used Death's Companion to attack him. 
but now I can't do that. My only option is to play this careful consideration to try to search through my deck for a way out of Purifying Wave. With all summons being killed soon, I know the lamps for the slaughter has very little use to me, so I discard it, putting Mind Reading on top of the deck and taking the Chrono Walker into my hand. She is gonna mm. fire shield as well. Uh, it's life loss. You can't prevent it. Oh, I see. Yeah. I can still fire shield. Though. You can if you <laughs> want it. Uh, I'm going to Narumina. And two health. Switch. Okay, I am down to 18. I'm down to Rejuvenating Springs. Okay. In response to Rejuvenating Springs, you can't slide so I do. Well, that's two damage? No. And then fire. Fire. Fire shield or fire the plastic. Alright. So I'm down to 16. You're at 18? Mm -hmm. I go here. At this point, my aura is starting to get a little bit lower than I'm comfortable with. So all I decide to do is just the basic attack instead of doing the Neuron. I know I could spend the extra 10 Aura to do him the extra 1 damage, but I don't really feel like it's useful at this point. I mean, I have to play every card as well. No, I don't have to. You don't have to. You don't have to do anything you don't want to do. So, so I'm using Chrono Walker at this point to get out of his fire attack too. Not because I can't take the damage, I know I can and be pretty comfortable with it, but playing the Chrono Walker gives me another offensive source. Hitting him for that additional 3 every single round is going to be super useful. And if he had a way to deal with the Chrono Walker now, he would have done it already. So instead, I'm going to drop the Chrono Walker and just try to bash him for 3 every single round. This is a difficult decision I see a lot of champions face with. Do they go after the champion to try to kill it before the summon kills them? Or do they turn around and kill the summon? In this case, Lionel came after me. I always find it unwise to leave the summons alone because they're a continuous source of damage that's being dealt to you. Unless you know you can get out of it, otherwise, just finish them off. You discarded them? Uh, energy burn. Ah, oh, I see. Dead, basically. Uh, let's discard and mind reading at a special point. Do you want to play mind reading? It's okay. Um, and let us do neuro. What you have? Ten. Ten? Okay. Next round. Mm -hmm. uh, fire 
attack. Well, potentially punch him in the fire attack. Concussion and fire attack. Who has concussion, concussion and punch in your swamp? Uh, yeah, I'll pressure point with the concussion punch. Alright, fire attack. Attack with the Corona Walker for three. Oh, I do have a fire in my hand. Wait, yeah. you need your own last round, didn't you? Yeah, you did. Uh, you should still have that because you drew it this round. Mm, did I? No, I didn't. What did you draw this round? Concussion punch? Oh, I guess I did draw concussion. Yeah, I punched a bunch of those, yeah. Okay. Then. So you're at seven. Just seeing if I can finish you right now. And that's more or less the end of the game. With a tsunami in hand and a meteorite about to be dropped on him, there's not a whole lot he can do here. It's definitely an evil style, but I love Kendra Control. It gives you so much power. Well, that's this matchup. If you have any comments or any way we can make this video better, let us know in the comments below. And that's it for now. Bye.